So to work out the TA of your wine or juice, you'd normally times the titer in millilitres, which is the amount of sodium hydroxide you've used to neutralise the sample, by 0.75. This gives you an answer in grams per litre as tartaric acid. For example, if we had a titer of 12.4 millilitres, we times this by 0.75 and our answer would be 9.3 grams per litre as tartaric acid. Now this assumes a couple of things. Firstly, that you're using a 0.1 molar concentration of sodium hydroxide. Secondly, that you've used 10 millilitres of sample. And finally, it assumes that all of the acid in the sample is tartaric acid. Now, while tartaric acid is the main acid that we see in wine, we know that, that it's not actually the only type of acid in wine. We've got malic acid, lactic acid, citric acid. But as we can't differentiate between these, and tartaric is the most dominant acid, we have to assume all of it is tartaric acid for the sake of this calculation. So before moving on to explain why we times by 0.75, we need to understand the reaction that's going on here. It's an acid-base reaction where the tartaric acid in the wine is reacting with the sodium hydroxide that you're adding from the burette to make sodium tartrate and water. So it's a very simple acid-base reaction. You've got an acid reacting with a base to make a salt, which in this case is sodium tartrate, plus water. Now the important thing to note here is that for this reaction to complete, we need two molecules of sodium hydroxide for every one molecule of tartaric acid. Now the reason for this is tartaric acid is diprotic, when in solution it releases two hydrogen ions. Therefore, to react with both of those hydrogen ions, we need two molecules of sodium hydroxide. This plays an important role in the calculation of the TA. So when we times by 0.75 to get our TA reading, we're actually condensing a much larger calculation. The full calculation is the concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the concentration of the base times the volume of the base. Now there's four separate parameters here. If we know three out of the four, we can calculate the fourth one. It doesn't matter which one that is, as long as we know the other three. So for us, the thing we don't know is the concentration of the acid. However, we do know the other three things. We know the volume of the acid, which in this case is 10 millilitres. Note that we are working in litres here, so we have to convert our millilitres into litres, and the concentrations are reported in molar. The concentration of the base, we know because we're using a 0.1 molar concentration of sodium hydroxide. And we know the volume of the base in litres, which is the titer volume, which is what we determine when we carry out the titration. Again, we have to convert our milliliter reading into litres for this calculation. Now, as mentioned earlier, we actually need twice the amount of base to acid, and we need to use that information in this equation for it to be accurate. So we actually have to times the acid side of the equation, the concentration of acid times the volume of acid by two. This represents how tartaric acid is a diprotic acid. So if we were to carry out this formula, plugging in all of our numbers that we have, we'd have two times the concentration of the acid, which is what we don't know, 
the volume of the acid, which we know, which is the 10 millilitres that we put into the conical flask, is equal to 0.1 molar, which is the sodium hydroxide concentration, times the tighter volume, which in our example is 12.4 millilitres. So from here, you just need to rearrange the formula and uh, calculate the things that you can as you go. So in this case, if we start with the right-hand side of the equation, we can times 0.0124 by 0.1. Then we can start to rearrange the formula. So divide both sides of the equation by two. We get rid of the two times on this side and we divide 0.00124 by two. Then simply we divide by 0.01 to remove the 0.01 from this side. And by dividing uh, 0.00062 by 0.01, we get an answer of 0.062 molar. So what we're saying then is the acid concentration in our sample is 0.062 molar which is great, but if you remember, we don't report the answer in molar, we report it in grams per litre as tartaric acid. So for that, we need to know the molecular weight of tartaric acid, which is 150. Then simply all we have to do is times our answer, which is in molar, by 150. In doing this, this gives us an answer of 9.3 grams per litre. And you'll notice that if we go back to our example as it was before at the beginning, we when we times just by 0.75, we get the same answer. So all of this long calculation, what it boils down to is times the tighter by 0.75, but it assumes we have a concentration of base of 0.1 molar and that we're using 10 milliliters of sample. So this longer version of the calculation can be used if some of those things aren't true. So for example, your concentration of base, maybe it's been sat in the lab for a while, it's started to reduce in concentration. If you know that it's reduced in concentration, then you can adjust for that by doing the full calculation as we've done here, but instead of putting 0.1 in here, maybe you put 0.09. And this will allow you to remain accurate in your calculation.